Check it out. The boss was a tube app expander. <laughs> So what you just heard were a couple of the cabinets uh, from the tube amp expander. Uh, everything else was the same. I didn't change any settings on the amp, on the pedals. Uh, I just switched the cabinet. Um, just to give you an idea of what that does to the sound. I'm not gonna go through every sound, every effect um, in this video because it would be really boring. Um, but I just want to give you an idea of how I use it, what the good things are, what I think the good things are, and what I think the bad things are, because it's not perfect, of course. I have this unit on loan from Boss, just to let you know I'm not being paid for this video. Um, but I think it's a fantastic unit, and I kind of quickly decided I want to keep it. Um, so lovely people from Boss, we're going to have to strike a deal. So let's look at the controls first real quickly. This section has to do with the rig. So you can turn these things on and off, switch channels on an amp, solo EQ, uh, effects, so this controls uh, compressor and delay. We'll go into that a little later. And this turns the effects loop on and off. And it's also selectable with a, a foot switch or with MIDI. This switches the rig presets and this controls the amount of reverb. This controls the things going to the speaker cabinet. Uh, this is the speaker out volume, and this works a bit different than the attenuation level on an aux, for instance, uh, because the aux is a true attenuator, and you can select different levels in which the aux attenuates. This is not an attenuator. It has a load, but it reamps your signal. There's an amplifier in here, and this controls the volume of that amplifier um, and the volume going to your speaker cabinet. And I was a bit weary at first because technically you're never hearing your own amplifier, but the amp from the tube amp expander. But the amp is so incredibly clean uh, that it just sounds like my amplifier, and it doesn't matter that it's being reamped. So, yeah, this is just the volume of the amp going to the speaker cabinet. Um, these are reactive load switches and you can set resonance and presence. I don't really know the technical details. Dan and Mick have a great video about it. Dan explains it really well. But from what I understand is when you turn down the volume, your speakers will sound different. When uh, it's hooked up to an attenuator and you turn it all the way down, the tone changes because there's not a lot of power going to the speakers and with these switches you can compensate for that. Um, well let's have a look at the back of the unit. Turn it off. 
Here we go. So standard power cable, which is a big plus to me because the AUX uses a uh, proprietary power supply. If you lose it, you have to buy a new one and it's really expensive. Uh, this goes to the speakers. This is coming from the amp and this sets the impedance. You can knock this very easily. Um, so I really had to train myself to check it every time before I turn my amp on um, that I didn't accidentally knock it to a different setting because you don't want to blow up your amplifier. Uh, this sets the input level, 10 watt amp, 50 watt amp, 100 watt amp, headphone out. This is mono going to front of house, stereo line outs, XLR. Um, effects loop, which is really, really nice. Uh, I already have some great ideas for what I'm going to do with that. More on that later. Here we attach the USB cable, uh, which it needs to connect to the editor. There is no app available. I would have loved to see something with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and, uh, and an app on your phone or tablet that you can always have around and change settings easily because uh, all the settings for delay and compression have to be changed in the editor. And um, so you need to lug around a laptop or computer and a USB cable to be able to change those settings. And MIDI, also very nice. You can control the whole device with something like a bus switcher or a gig rig G3. Really cool. All right, so like I said, I am really in love with this, but um, when you look at a Universal Audio AUX, for instance, it looks sexy from all sides. Um, this just has a pretty front panel. When you look at the top, there is a manual printed on the device. Why would you do that? I love you, boss, but why? why? So since I'm going to keep it anyway, <laughs> I decided to uh, build an enclosure for it to make it look even prettier. And um, yeah, this is not going to be a tutorial on how to do a Tolex or a grill cloth or whatever, because there's enough videos online about that already. Uh, but I just wanted to show you the process.
Okay, so let's have a look at the editor. Um, there are several pieces of software. There's the editor, the IR loader, and an updater thing um, to update the firmware of the tube amp expander. Um, I wish Boss would have put everything together in one piece of software. And um, when you look at the Boss website, there is this whole list on how to update uh, the tube amp expander. It shouldn't be so hard. Boss is really, really, really good at hardware. I love their hardware. Um, Software-wise, they still have some things to improve. Um, but you know, it works. It's versatile and you can set a lot of stuff in the editor. So let's have a look. So this is the editor. Um, at the left here you see several rigs and these correspond with the rig selector switch on the tube amp expander itself. So when I turn that, it will select another rig in the editor. Um, this is your signal path. This is everything in the tube amp expander uh, right until the last effect and then it splits. And this is the split to the speaker cap, and this is the split to the line out. So you can set several things here as well, like the EQ, uh, the simulation is here, the cap simulation goes to the line out, but of course not to the speaker cap. Let's see what we have here. These are all the caps you can select. As you can see, there are a lot of them 4x12s, 4x10s, 2x12s, 1x12, 1x10, 1x8 and also user slots. And with the IR loader, you can load your own speaker simulations into the um, tube amp expander. And these here are the mics. Uh, you can set dynamic mics, condenser mics, a ribbon mic, and a blend of several mics, which is fine, it works. It sounds really, really good. But when you're going for tweakability, um, I would have loved to seen the possibility to make your own blend and set the volume of these mics separately uh, so you can tweak it even more. You can set the mic distance, short, medium and long, and the mic position. And you can also select room mics. Um, and this really works well when you're recording in stereo um, because when you're recording in stereo, when you look at the waveform, let's have a look at that. So for instance, here, there's a clear peak on the left channel and not on the right. So there are tiny differences in the left and right side. Um, and that makes it really 3D. Um, you need a stereo signal for that. So I, when you're recording, I would recommend to always record in stereo because it just sounds the best. Just let's have a look at the effects. Uh, there's a built-in compressor. You can select two models, a built-in delay with a lot of models 
which is really nice. Analog delay, which sounds really good. And a stereo delay, which ping pongs from the left to the right. When you're recording uh, in stereo, that's really cool. These are engaged on the front panel with the effects knob. It's also switchable, of course, with a foot switch. If you don't want to turn on the compressor, you can simply select disable here with the panel button assign drop down menu and then only the delay will turn on and off and you can assign that per preset and everything so that's really cool um, the reverb also has several reverbs a hall reverb hall 2 plate room 1 room 2 and spring what i'm using is the plate and then i'll dial in the amount of reverb i want with this knob and you can see it changing there in the effect level as well but the cool thing is is that you can um, choose where the reverb goes so do you want it to go to line out um, and do you want it to go to the speaker so for instance if you want it to go to the speaker to have a little spacious sound on stage but not to front of house you're able to do so and that is a very 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 big plus i think that's all i want to cover on the editor oh yeah there's system settings here as well which is really boring but necessary so you know the the editor it it really works and um you can set all kinds of stuff that you can set on a device like the ox for instance so this is way more versatile um it's also less user friendly so yeah there's a learning curve you have to uh, practice with the editor find out where everything is but once you get the hang of it um yeah it's just really lovely it has so many options and you can set, set so many things once you get into that you're uh, left with wanting for more because you think oh that would be cool oh that would be cool would be cool if you could do that um and what universal audio does really well they give you a package and that's it you know and you accept that's all you can do with it um, they do that really well because it looks really sleek um, and this is tweakable and it looks tweakable um, so once you are tweaking you're left wanting to tweak even more all right let's check out some more sounds Something we haven't tried before is the 4x12 Greenback V30 mix. Super combo. Oh, that one we tried. 4x10 tweet combo. setting and try a different mic this is condenser 87 set the mic distance to the long away of center
Let's try a delay. Let's turn it on. And then we have the compressor. What's also cool is that there is a um, EQ built in. This is with. And this is without. If you have, if you, if you've, if you've attached a switch foot, <laughs> so if you've attached a foot switch or connected it to a MIDI controller, um, you could use it as a boost uh, or whatever. You know, its uh, uh, possibilities are endless. So I'm gonna stop now because I could keep on going for hours. Uh, but Henning did that already. He uh, I believe he did five videos of an hour, something like that. It's the most comprehensive set of videos on the Tube Amp exp Expander you'll find on the interwebs. So if you want to know more, please go check out the, his videos. They are awesome and he is awesome. And um, you'll be seeing a lot more of the Tube Amp Expander in my own videos because I simply love it. Thank you for watching and uh, please subscribe to the channel. Bye-bye. <laughs>